Hey everyone, today I want to show you some of my worn out brushes, brushes that I have used since 2009 or 2008 when I started urban sketching, when I started using watercolor. So let's go through them one by one. I'm going to start with the smallest brush, which is this one. This is the Da Vinci Maestro Pocket Brush from series 1503. I have a few of this in different sizes. This is size 6 if I'm not wrong. This is so worn out that even the labels, the words, the barcode on this sticker, it is, well, gone. And also the labels on the body, also gone. Here's another brush, also size 6. You can see some labels here. This is almost gone. This is a size 8 if I'm not wrong. So this is how it's supposed to look like when the label is still there. These brushes, they are made in Germany. This is Kolinsky Sable Brush Hair. It still has the spring, but it can no longer hold any point because it is so worn out. These are among my first pocket brushes, so they hold a special place in my heart. I brought them overseas, I use them here in Singapore extensively. I've painted a lot of pages with them. And over the years they have stood up to the stand of time, but gradually the hair, it has worn out. So uh, let me just wet these brushes to let you see how they perform, even though they are worn out. Let me try and get a thin one. So this is the thinnest it can get. It still has amazing water capacity. I can still get broad strokes just that when I want to paint details, when I want to paint sharp lines, this brush, um, it can no longer do so. This is the other worn out size 6. It still has some markings on the body, so this is not as old compared to this. And when I dip the pen in water, I can see that it can still achieve a rather sharp point. So this brush may look worn out, but it can still achieve a sharp point, but barely so. So this is not a brush um, that can paint sharp lines easily. And now let me show you a size 8. This brush, uh, well, I don't use it as often, so it should be able to get me a sharp line. I need to be very careful though to get those sharp lines. You can give me a very broad stroke like this. These are the three Da Vinci brushes. This is the oldest brush. It can no longer hold a tip. This brush here, this is very old as well. It can barely hold a tip. And this brush, which I thought was not worn out, well, it turns out that it's a bit worn out. So after the first Da Vinci brush got worn out, I bought a different brush. This is the Da Vinci Maestro Voyage brush. This is also a pocket brush. This is from the series 910. This is also a pocket brush. Now the mechanism of this brush versus other pocket brushes is a bit different. So to collapse this, you have to pull this up to cover the brush hair. And then you cap it back like this. Now I once uh, dropped this on the ground and some of the dust bit, the sand, they got into this uh, place here. Because of the dirt and sand, each time I cap the brush, the chrome plating, it gets scraped off. So it gets scraped off more and more and now it becomes like this, which is pretty ugly. Because of this sliding mechanism, it's actually very easy to keep this brush. You just slide it up, it will protect the hair, and then you can cap it. This is unlike 
collapsible brushes like this where you have to unscrew it or pull it out if you are using an Escoda pocket brush and make sure that you carefully cap the brush without disturbing the bristles. I have damaged a few brushes because when I capped the brush, I accidentally uh, damaged the bristle. So um, always be very careful when you're capping your brush. If I'm not wrong, this brush only comes in a size 6. After I worn out this brush, I went back to get another one of these Maestro pocket brush. And after this one got worn out, I switched to using Rosemary. So this is a Rosemary pocket brush. Rosemary is a company that makes a lot of different brushes. They have watercolor brushes, oil painting brushes, and for watercolor brushes, they have different shapes. This is a round brush. They have the rigger, they have the sable, flat washes. They also have the squirrel, all in pocket format, as well as in the normal short handle watercolor brush format. And for the hair, there is Kolinsky hair, there is Red Sable hair. Personally, I cannot tell the difference between Kolinsky and Red Sable. They are both um, sable and they perform like good sable brushes. Rosemary makes very good quality brushes. This is the Da Vinci Maestro Voyage. It's worn out, but it is still quite sharp. I don't use this anymore because um, it looks really old. And this is the rosemary brush. This is really difficult to get a thin line. So this is the best I can do with this brush. It's really thick. The next brush is a uh, Navskaya Palitra from series 1113. This is made in Russia. This is a very beautiful Kolinsky sable brush. The body has a uh, yellow slightly. Let me show you a new brush and how it looks like. So this is how it's supposed to look like when it's new and this uh, brush here, it is now a bit yellowish. You may have seen me use this brush in many of my tutorials on YouTube. I get a lot of questions from people asking me about this brush, like what brand it is, where to buy it. This is made in Russia, so I think this is not easy to find in Western countries like Europe or USA. I bought this here in Singapore at an art shop called Streets Commercial. This is the old Navskaya Palitra. It can still give me a sharp point. As long as you take care of your watercolor brushes, you can uh, get them to last for quite a long time. Looking at this brush suddenly reminds me of a question that a viewer asked me. He or she asked um, about the brush hair, whether it's okay for the brush hair to free out like this. It's actually quite normal. Some brushes they will dry with a sharp point but some brushes they will dry with the hair spread out like this but once you wet it once you wet it it should go back to a point like this and that is all it matters i do not use a lot of synthetic brushes this is one this is a water brush the holbein water brush and this is an Excoda perla brush the bristles from this holbein brush they wear out very quickly I would paint as normal and in one or two months time it will look something like this. Now if you take good care of your watercolor brush they should last for a long time but for this particular one um, it wears out just so much quicker compared to other brushes. I don't really have a lot of experience with synthetic brushes. I do not know how long they last. Um, if you have any um, experience with them let me know about their durability all right this is the perla brush i do not use synthetic brush often because they do not hold a lot of water compared to sable brushes so when i use them i find that i have to keep reloading them now in terms of performance you can get pretty sharp lines as well just that they do not hold as much water compared to 
sable brushes so you have to reload them and personally i find that it's quite inconvenient to keep on reloading especially if you are painting large washes the last brush i want to show you is this brush that i use to clean my watercolor boxes so this is the brush that i use to scrub out the paint to keep my watercolor box clean i think this is some synthetic brush i have been using this for a few years it's still going strong even though it's blunt but for cleaning purposes it works just fine having a brush with a sharp tip is very important when it comes to painting details for example if you want to paint in sharp edges sharp corners if you want to paint within the lines having a sharp tip is going to be very helpful so for example here i have a drawing of a coconut tree the leaves of this tree is very distinct they have very sharp uh, strokes so I'm going to paint this tree, the leaves, using this blunt brush to let you see what's going to happen. It's very difficult to keep within the lines. And not just that, it's very difficult to get that tapered stroke that I want. So painting something like this is very challenging with a blunt brush with a worn out brush let's see what would happen if i paint very fast and now i have switched to a sharp brush i want to let you see how much how easier it is to paint the strokes now Even painting quick strokes like this, it's also easier and I can get a sharp stroke, a very tapered stroke. With this worn out brush, it's, it's really difficult. You can see the strokes here, they are almost rounded off compared to the strokes here, which have sharp edges. Having recognizable shapes, recognizable silhouettes in watercolor is important and using the correct brush to create those strokes is important. The best way to keep your brushes in tip-top condition is to use them properly. So um, when you are picking up paint, try not to dig into the pan. For example, this particular half pan, the paint is almost worn out and if I have to get the paint out, I have to sort of dig at the pen like this and when you are stabbing into the pen like this it's going to damage the tip obviously so if you see your half pan are almost used up just fill it up back to the brim something like this so that when you pick paint up you can load the paint from the side of the brush rather than from the tip of the brush Filling up your pens is probably the easiest way to protect your brushes. So the next time before you go out sketching, just fill up your pen first. You can fill it up one day before and allow the pen to dry, allow the paint to dry. Another brush care tip is to wet your paint first before you use your brush to pick up the paint. So when the paint is wet, it's soft, it's easier to pick up with the brush. When the paint is hard, especially in pens like this, um, if you scrub the hard paint, it's going to damage your brush. And the last brush care tip that I know of is to clean your brush properly, especially so for larger brushes like this. For a large brush like this, pigment or paint can get into the brush, the furrow here, and over time it will make the brush hard. And when you use a hard brush, of course you are going to use more strength because you want to get that stroke, you are going to use more strength, and it's going to damage the hair. Another thing to note is these small holes at the back of pocket brushes, they help ventilate the brush hair when the brush is kept but do not rely on them to dry the brush hair because these are too small for drying brushes. You can cap your wet watercolor brushes like this and put them under the sun for a few days. Those tiny breather holes at the back, they will not dry your brushes. Believe me, I've tried that before. 
And here in Singapore, humidity is very high. When the brush hair is wet for long periods of time, they grow more. And that's very scary for me. How long your brushes can last really depends on how well you take care of them. Do you step at the pin or do you use the side of the brush? Do you clean them regularly? It also depends on the type of paper you use. Do you use cold press, hot press or rough paper? Of course, with rough paper, the hair is going to get worn out more quickly. Regardless of whether it is synthetic brush or natural hair brush, you should take good care of them. When you take good care of them, they can last for years. So even if a sable brush is expensive, when it lasts for years, it can still make um, your money worthwhile. So that's all for today's video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I would also love to hear about what kind of brushes you use, how long you have used your brushes and how durable they are. So thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.